Look how big these wheels are. They're bigger than my face. So we can see it's got metal wheel hexes. You want to put the wheels on? Yeah, sure, I'll do that. Ha ha ha! Yeah! Boom! They did some really good thinking and have the clips going in sideways. That'll help keep them from popping out on collisions. Real beefy bumper, but it's still flexible. Sure. Normally I'd be on my bench, but I've got a project going on. So unfortunately we're stuck out here on this nice sunny 70 degree day. But since fatherhood comes slightly before our seas, we didn't get a chance to run it. Now it looks like this. Well, now we have another sunny day. That rainstorm actually turned into a major windstorm, destroyed our trampoline. Luckily we have a new one up already. So we're gonna take it for a spin first, do the bench review here in just a minute. Looks pretty beefy, feels really heavy. That can be good or bad. It'll just be a real quick test with speed, agility on the ground and in the air. Can it do flippies both ways? Yeah, the usual. And then we'll see how it held up and uh, look at positives and negatives. Since it's capable of both, we are gonna check it with 2S and 3S. Oh, he's definitely got brakes. All right, let's see if it has a backflip in it. No, not on 2S. Speed test. Oh, start over. Oh. <laughs> 24.3. Oh yeah, I can't wait to slap a 3S in here. Hey, you know it's not raining anymore, right? Yeah. Okay. We can definitely note that the body is a little flimsy. This is now like a wind flap for motor cooling. Otherwise, she is 3S capable, so. Whoops. Yeah, now she flies. I bet it'll backflip now. That's pretty cool. 3S speed test. Whoa. Oh, who parked this truck here? Ugh. 19. <laughs> I'd say that that is false. Oh, dirt. Gosh. Oh, I see. Yeah, all right. Well, that's not going to work because it says 18.2. I think we're just going to have to guess and say that this is darn near pushing 40. Nice. Ooh, man, this thing's got brakes. Ooh. Max's turn. It's not turning. Oh, it's not turning? Uh-oh. Holy Toledo, that was so much better than I was expecting. This is one of the best flying, soaring, flipping vehicles that we've got, I'd say. I'm extremely impressed by that performance. Flipping ability, the speed on 3S. Durability, because that took some pretty heavy hits. And how perfect that suspension is. But our servo stopped working. No steering at all. So we'll just unplug it here. Plug in this known good servo and it's still not working. So it's probably not the servo itself. We're gonna investigate the servo further in just a minute. I'm happy with this controller. The on off switch is in here along with your other controls. I had to continuously keep changing the steering trim. After almost every single jump, it would start to veer left or veer right and I had to keep on adjusting. I think a lot of that'll get fixed by tightening up the servo saver. Because as you might be able to tell here, the servo saver is quite loose. And luckily that is easily achieved by tightening up this little thumb wheel. The batteries do have to sit up tall. They can't, there's not enough room to sit flat. The tray's just not wide enough for it. Definitely good that it's got a wheelie bar. It was very much needed. These tires are really grippy. And even with them being grippy, it still handled without rolling over 
pretty well. When it does flip over, it definitely likes to stay on its lid. It does not flip back over onto its wheels very easily. Ah. I do think the suspension works really well. This was going way up and it still had very minimal bounce upon landing. Now the tires are starting to tear pretty badly actually. This is the worst out of all four it's of them. It's possible that it's from centrifugal force of the ballooning action when it's on 3S though it really didn't look that bad, but it's actually probably from the tires grabbing so well around corners and then slamming the throttle, just dragging that soft grippy rubber on the concrete. Now with this steering problem, hopefully there's just something unplugged. Maybe it even unplugged from the actual receiver. Let's find out. Nope, everything's still plugged in. What about underneath? Ah, there it is. It is unplugged. She's back. That's great news, but on that note, that is such a slow steering servo. Again, the body is really flimsy and we cracked the front of it in a couple places. But other than that, it seems like nothing has broken. Well, the tires, of course. It'll be really interesting to compare this MT-10E to the rival MT-10. Two completely different companies, but two really pretty similar trucks. And not because they share a lot of the same parts. These are both built completely differently. They're both 10th scale vehicles, but I'd say the Red Cat has it beat a little bit on size. Both have really good suspension. Both take 2 and 3S. Both run at very close to the same speed. You could swap the bodies and almost never even know it. So that's gonna happen. Previously, uh, man, that's getting confusing. This was one of my favorite 10th scale, maybe even one of my favorite RCs that I've got. And this one, if she stays as durable as it has been for this time, it might even take that spot. So that's gonna happen. We're gonna do that for sure. Kinda sounds like there's a little skip in a gear somewhere. Oh, yep, yeah, there's a little lockup. We definitely have something going on probably in the differential. The spur gear and the pinion look fine. I already ran all the way through it. Judging off my past experience, it's most likely a problem in the front differential. We're gonna diagnose it in just a minute. The reason that that happens so quickly, especially a car that's this heavy, this large. When I say large, I just mean like bigger than a 16th or a 12th scale car. It's because it lacks a center differential. However, they actually sell one you can put in here and we are definitely gonna do that. So a few more things. This car has really rigid plastics. This bumper has a really interesting spring setup, different than what most cars have. The wheelie bar didn't break off, which is awesome. It definitely got landed on a few times. You've got this really stout, deep tub chassis. You can also tell that the skid plates on the front and the rear took up most of the beating from the concrete. A removable panel to access your steering linkage that's underneath the servo. And even with the servo saver being kind of loose, it definitely needs to be tightened up. This thing had a lot of turning power. It's just really slow. The ESC has a cooling fan along with this extra protection over top of it. The receiver is inside a protective box like you already saw. Big bore shock rods, steel axles with good size bearings in the hubs. Also the center drive shaft is steel and it's two parts. You have the spur gear here and then you have the rear center drive shaft and the front center drive shaft. You have aluminum shock towers front and rear with quite a bit of bracing to help keep them supported. These were the batteries I used, a Z2S 50C and an Ovonic 3S 80C, both 5,200 milliamp hours. They made it too late for this video, but we have two other batteries that we are gonna test soon, whether in this car or a different one. Some 2S's that are 5,500 milliamp hours and some 3S that are 5,300. The tie rods are metal, but they're really thin. But at the same time, they have so far absorbed some pretty nasty hits. Even looks like there's an option to mount a sway bar. There's a spot on both front and rear differentials and a mounting point in the control arms. I'm super impressed and happy with this purchase. It far exceeded my expectations. I didn't know what to expect. This is my first red cap. But this has definitely earned our respect. I showed you those preload adjustment clips for the shocks. Also comes with a tire tool and a colored instruction manual. Tells you all the things that instruction manual should tell you. Gives you really clear part breakdowns with all the part numbers, along with a description of each part. Even comes with an optional filter that you can put underneath here to protect dust and debris from getting in your ESC fan. It's a little thing, but I think that's awesome. So the front differential or whatever in the drive line is bad. It's not even turning the front tires. If you look inside there, 
The center drive shaft is still spinning even when the front tires are not. And at the same time, neither front drive shaft is spinning either. So we have spinning up to the differential and we have no spinning at the tires or at the outputs of the front differential. That means the differential is not doing what it's supposed to do. Like I said, that's kind of what I expected. I am not disappointed because it's happened to pretty much every car I've got. As long as installing that center differential kit that they have solves the problem and doesn't make that happen so quickly, super happy with this truck. One of the best performing ones that I've got, especially for the price. And even with the little things that happen, it's holding up great. Hey, if you like RC car stuff and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit that notification bell. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.